Audio Jungle. Audio jungle. How do I see like both of us, or do I only see you? Wait, you don't see yourself? Like I see myself this big in the corner. That's weird. How do I make it like both of us? Oh, um, I think you can. Uh, yeah, there is a way to do that. There isn't. No, there is. Normally, is. I don't know why it's doing this. Hmm. That's a good question. Normally there is that. You can like put them oh, side to side. change layout. I got it. Yeah. I know there's a way. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, we'll do it like that. Like a Zoom meeting. Look to it. It's not doing anything for me. Oh, it's it's like... okay. I'll just look at you. Ta da. <laughs> <laughs> Are we recording? Okay. Let me get the intro. You probably doing podcasts all the time, huh? Yeah, but I not in this format. I guess like Zoom interviews, but that's it. Oh shoot! Let me turn my. Let me know when you're ready. I don't want anyone to call in the middle of this. <laughs> hey, y'all need your help with? <laughs> right? No, 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 no. We not doing that for thirty minutes, huh? Mm-hmm. Andrew, what, Andrew, what, what, what are you, what are you mixed with? Black. I think I asked you this already. And it's Andrea. You keep calling me Andrea. I've been saying that for wrong the entire since we've been friends. You know that, right? I know. And you know, you, that's the first time you I think you corrected me. No, I correct you all the time. You do? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm just black. I'm black mixed with more black. You gotta do the ancestry.com. No. <laughs> I feel like I, I want the government to have my ID. Right. I mean, I already know I'm black. What do I need a piece of paper to tell me anything? You know? Are you Nigerian black? Are you like, you know? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm going to every African country and I'm going to identify with each of those people. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're about to start. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> This is the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin, a.k.a. Q Gus No Days Off. From on the field and off the field, NFL player and entrepreneur. Motivating you to be the best you can be and getting you out of your comfort zone. Sharing with you travel, sports, and entrepreneurial tips with amazing guests on the show. Now, get ready. For your life to change with the Life Journey Podcast and your host, Quentin Gauz. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Oh, we have a good one today. We have a great one today. Again, welcome to the Life Journey Podcast. So excited. We we are like, we're actually broadcasting from Rochester. And then we we're we're gonna let's let's, let's fly real quick to LA. <sighs> fly to LA real quick. We have one of my Childhood friends, we'll say that. Yeah, childhood <laughs> friends. Um, Andrea, how are you doing? I'm doing well. You know, I'm staying safe, staying healthy through all the madness, but I'm blue. Can't complain. It's good to have you on the show. So, man, COVID 19, how has it like affected your daily life uh, up to this point? It's been um, an adjustment for sure. I would say a lot of the work that I do. Um, I do from home, but the meetings and being on set that has all changed. So it's been um, it's been quite an adjustment, but I'm I'm really blessed to have my own space. So it's been nice. That's awesome. I love the background, by the way. Thank it's, you. I designed it myself. That's awesome. <laughs> What's that quote say in the corner? Your back. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Live the life you've always dreamed of. Be fearless in the face of adversity. Never stop learning 
Use your imagination whenever possible. Recognize the beauty that surrounds you. Remember where you came from, but never lose sight of where you're going. Dang. That's that's powerful. Five, eight, five, represent no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's powerful right there. Why do you why do you like what inspired you to put that up? Um, basically because, you know, um our hometown means so much to me, you know. I don't I don't like that when people leave Rochester or they become successful, they never bring up that they're from Rochester. Mm -hmm. Um, and that always like it just doesn't sit with me. Like I hate when people are like, oh well, I was born in New York City, but you grew up in Rochester, honey. So <laughs> like <laughs> let's be oh, real. Yeah. So I think like I put that up one because you I don't ever want to forget where I come from, who raised me, what raised me, and also just being fearless and just kind of like surrendering to my imagination and surrendering to whatever path like God puts me on instead of like trying to control it. So that's kind of what that quote is for me. I love it. I love it. Positive vibes. Everyone listening, make sure you put post a quote in your home as well too. Make sure yeah. you follow. Like an affirmation, you know, you got to remind yourself. <laughs> got to. So let the folks know like what was it like growing up in Rochester, New York as a kid? Let's talk about from me as a kid all the way to high school. I loved Rochester. I mean, people talk so much junk about it, which <laughs> like, I get it. Like, it's not like, but it's home. So for me, I mean, I don't know. My parents always kept me super busy. And um, I don't know, We I'm the only child. So uh, my parents like spent a lot of time with me. I would constantly be going to work with them. My mom is in construction, my father's in radio. So I was working every day with them, learning how to run boards by like five years old, putting up drywall by the time I'm 11. Um, <clears throat> and just honestly, being a kid, I played sports. I was in ex all these extracurricular activities. I went to camp. Life was like, I was blessed, you know? I'm still blessed. And um, you know, there's some, some rough edges that you experienced growing up, but for the most part, um, I was surrounded by so much love and guidance and nurturing and not only from within my family, but within the community. So yeah, growing up was, was nice. That's what's up. So I was, I was talking to Kayla the other day and he um, said <laughs> when he, when, uh, yeah, you were younger, like they like, were like your, he was like your bodyguard and stuff like that. He'd pick you up just from school. Oh, and, like, first of all, <laughs> those men, they're the reason. What I never dated when I was in Rochester, okay? They, oh my gosh, they were like, they were like my guardian angels. Like they really looked after me. Like they were my uncles, big brothers, cousins, all in one. Yeah, they would pick me up from school. They would pick me up from camp. Oh my God, I remember this one time. So it was like, there was a couple people, but I really only remember like Kayla, Raheem, there was Squeaky and Pooh, right? So those were the guys that were, I was blessed to be raised around because they really showed me like what a man is supposed to be like. They always were respectful. They took care of me. They were always just, were just so chivalrous and, and gentlemanly, right? And so I'm blessed to have been around those type of men. But you know, it got real <laughs> sticky um, when I got to the age where I could start going on dates. And I remember this one time, and I was, I think mean, that was the last date I ever went on in Rochester. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> where I was like at the movies, I'm like, you know, cuddling up next to the guy, ready to watch the movie. And all of a sudden, this big old man turns around and goes like this to me, puts his fingers to his eyes and then points at me. I'm like, Raheem? And then he texts me, I'm watching you. So I was like, you know, I was supposed <laughs> to have them around, but you know, it was, I couldn't get away with much. I couldn't get away with anything, actually. You were constantly watched and monitored. Constantly. <laughs> if any concert or event I went to, my uncles were security. If I was at the movies, they were at the movies too. If I was trying to sneak and do something I wasn't supposed to, somebody would always find me. So that's one thing about Rochester. It's small enough where people will keep tabs on you. <laughs> Man, go. I mean, that's a good, it's a good thing, but yeah, like when you're trying to grow up, you're like, all right, man, I think, you know, it's, it's at that point now to like be free of it. And that's funny. But it was, it was good that I didn't like, you know, I didn't get into trouble at all 
because I had all that, you know, that guidance and nurturing. And honestly, I appreciate it now looking back where it's like, where most of my friends were doing a lot of stuff <laughs> we shouldn't have been doing and they got in trouble for it. So I'm, I'm grateful that, you know, I had my little village around me. That's good. That's solid. It's good to have that community. Like you said, that's important. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about high school going into college. Yeah. So I, whew. yeah, high school was like kind of boring to be honest. Yeah. It was like, I was, um, it wasn't, I went to Brighton. So there wasn't like too much stuff going on out there. I was, um, varsity track, basketball, I did gymnastics. And then I participated in all the plays um, and musicals. And on top of that, I'm working after school at both of my parents' companies. So, Absolutely. yeah, I was just like busy all the time. I didn't really like go out too much. I was, I guess I'm just kind of a homebody already. So this, this situation isn't too bad <laughs> for me. Um, but, you know, I took a lot of AP classes and um, I did as, as well, you know, as I needed to, to get to college, which sounds lazy, but hey, like it was what it was. And um, I ended up going to school in Philadelphia. And uh, I went to school, actually, my major was uh, humanities with a concentration in linguistics and Chinese language. So I speak Mandarin. Oh, you did tell me that, yeah. That's nice, right? I know. Anytime I go to like a Chinese restaurant, they'd be like, Shama. Like they're so like, black, like, not, <laughs> they're like not, black girl speaks Chinese. Like, yeah. Yeah. But so, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. You no, know, I'll say so is that like uh like you know like it's like hundred percent fluent or no, like not anymore. So it's been some years. It's been some years since I have been conversational, especially because I don't really have anyone to talk to. Um, mm -hmm. and when I make like Chinese friends, they always want to speak English. And I'm like, no, let's speak Mandarin. Um, but yeah, I used to be conversational. Like I used to be very confident speaking back and forth. Wow. I'm still confident speaking Spanish, but I'm not as confident speaking um, Chinese. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so you know three languages. Mm -hmm. And I stuff. spoke, like I had to speak French growing up. That school, they taught us French. And then when I, uh, was in college, I studied abroad in Italy, so I picked up Italian as well. Cool, okay. Mm. So technically it's five. Yeah, I guess. If like, I needed to a couple speak, words. <laughs> if I needed to like figure out how to get somewhere, I would be able to. <laughs> I got you, not for you on that. All right, so you went to college in Philadelphia, I'm be a temple, right? Well, first I went to St. Joseph's University, which is a small Jesuit school. So when I was doing like musicals in high school, I did a lot of musicals at McQuaid. And um, one of my, he wasn't like my advisor because I obviously didn't go to McQuaid, um, but he was like one of the, the administrator for musicals there or whatever. He recommended that I check out some Jesuit schools, so I did. So that's how I ended up like St. Joe's. Well, even like my process of going to college because I wasn't trying to go to school like I wanted to travel. I just wanted to live life. I felt like I've been in school enough. Like, I just want to be free. So I like applied to a couple of schools, but I had no intention of going. So yeah. it to be like July, the end of July. And my parents were like, where are you going to college? I was like, oh yeah, I'm not going to go. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have a year off and travel the world and backpack. And they were like, uh, no, you're going to college. They got the mail and they found the only one that was still accepting students. And that's how I went to St. Joe's. <laughs> and so St. Joe's was very, um, if I had to describe it or compare it to something, it was like Victor. Okay, I got you. You get what I'm trying to say right now? Okay, so I wasn't trying to be in that environment. So I transferred to Temple. And Temple was one of, at the time, the number two most diverse schools in the nation. And I was just like in awe of like all the walks of life that, you know, I was interacting with. And um, yeah, I fell in love with Temple. Temple was, Temple was a lot of fun. Temple was the perfect college experience for me. It's in the middle of the city. I get to meet all types of people. I had the ability to do study abroad. Um, and that's when I ended up switching to um, a business major with a minor in digital marketing because my dad was like, 
so you're majoring in Chinese language. Are you going to be an interpreter? I was like, no. Was like, so, are you going to like, are you going to move to China? I was like, no. He was like, then you need to pick a major that is actually going to give you a career. I was like, oh, okay, I guess. Yeah, that's good guidance though, low key. Like, yeah. <laughs> he caught that early though, because I mean, you would still be successful, but like, you know, at least I you, was you, literally going to do nothing with Chinese, like at all. So <laughs> there was no point of me even. <laughs> no, I thought it was cool, because we, I don't know about like with you guys when you were in high school, but or even in middle school or lower school, like they never really taught us about anyone else except Caucasians. So like my parents did an excellent job of making sure that I understood who I was and where I come from. And they made sure that I learned about black history. But then um, I just thought it was weird when I went to Brighton for high school, there was all these Chinese kids and they only talked to each other and they didn't really speak English that well. And then when we would learn about like Asian or Chinese culture in school, they would call them like the Orients and like they would, I don't know, like kind of, um, I don't know, like dehumanize them in a way. So when I went to college, I wanted to learn about the other billions of people that are on this planet because I just felt like I wasn't given a true um, rounded view of the world from what I learned in, in schools growing up. So that's why I chose to speak. I chose humanities and to speak Chinese and Mandarin because I didn't know anything about it and I wanted to learn about it. But then I was like, oh, wait a second. What am I going to do with this? I can know it, but it's right. going to be <laughs> so I ended up going to school for business. Um, and I graduated from Temple in 2014 and I applied to grad school because that was something that was always just pushed on me was just like getting an education. My grandfather was a huge proponent of getting an education because, you know, a lot of our people aren't afforded the same opportunities uh, back then as we are now or even now, you know, so it's like if you have the opportunity to go to school, take advantage of that opportunity. So I, I applied. Um, uh, at schools in New York or LA because I knew I still wanted to pursue acting, um, which has always been, you know, uh, a hobby or a, something that I've always been passionate about. Um, but if I went to school in like Syracuse, which has an excellent uh, grad program, I, I was going to be bored. Like, <laughs> there's two <laughs> in Syracuse. Right. Woo! Um, <laughs> right. It's like no like shade on Syracuse, but it's worse than Rochester. Like there's literally nothing to do. At least I don't know what's going on in Syracuse. So I applied um at schools. I applied um in LA and New York. But um I ended up coming out to LA and looking at UCLA and USC's campus and fell in love with the campuses. And I always knew that like I wanted to move to LA one day. When I was 13, um, my parents and I came out to LA for my birthday. And I was like, oh yeah, like I wanna, I wanna move out here. I wanna act out here. And my dad was like, well, good luck. You better start saving your money now because I'm not paying for it. So I did. That's when I started my first bank account. <laughs> That's when he uh -huh. said he wasn't gonna help me move to LA. So I was ready by the time it was time to go to grad school. I've been saving my whole life, worked like six jobs in college, kept stacking money. So by the time it was time to go to grad school, I was ready. I went to USC, got a master's in business communications, and I started doing more student films when I was in school. And a couple of those student films went into festivals and people saw me in festivals and asked me to be in other projects. And it kind of just tumbled into what it, what it's still growing into right now. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of how I got here. <laughs> uh, so, like, there's something I was reading. Well, we are, we're talking about that book called Atomic Habits, right? And <laughs> within it, it talked about getting 1% better every day. Yeah. So every single day, you know, you know it adds up for the year, right? So yeah. it seems, you know, you put in a lot of work to achieve that goal. So, like, you said you wanted to move out to LA, you wanted to be in movies, you, you wanted to be in films and stuff like you, you put that in your mind and you, it was, you know, like you said, you, the daily affirmation you constantly told yourself 
and like it's happening right now. You're out in LA, you have your own place. You're you know constantly you know pushing to be in different movies and have been on films. Like, how does that feel? Like, yo, X, a lot of stuff has come true, and like a lot of more stuff is. Like, how does that feel? Like inside, like what's? How do you do that? Like, folks that don't know, how do you how do you make that real? How? Um, how does it feel? First of all, it feels regular because I knew it was gonna happen. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I'm no surprise. Like I. And I'm still on my way. I'm not to where I want to be yet. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel? It's it's still, I'm grateful every day I wake up and thank God. I'm extremely grateful, but it feels regular. You know, I'm so, I'm so working. How do you do it? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I just, I feel like the way I was raised helped me a lot because the mindset and perspective that my help, my parents helped kind of give me and I kind of like grew on my own that foundation was extremely helpful because I was always told that I'm smart that I can accomplish anything I put my mind to I was always told to ask questions I was always told to learn about things around me and that was a foundation I was on then when I like moved out of the house at 18 I started reading books like the Secret and the Four Agreements and The Alchemist and those type of books, like especially as like a late teen, early twenties, was they were really getting my moving and helping me to it to see the world in a different perspective and really helping me to when you say like mind over matter, like it what that really means, you know. So how can you do that? You have to believe it first. You can take the steps, but if you don't 100% commit to that belief, you mm -hmm. won't be able to manifest anything in your life, you know? Um, and so I highly recommend anyone that's on a journey for awareness or self-discovery to really read. Like, it's it's, the, <laughs> it's the best thing. And if you don't like to read, get an audio book. Because I'm telling you, from reading, it will inspire so many other ideas or beliefs within you that you didn't even know were ready to be cracked open. Um, and yeah, this, it, you have to be willing to take a journey of self-discovery and self-awareness to achieve anything. Why don't you have your own book yet? My own book? Yo, what, you know what's so crazy? You're probably like the 10th or 11th person that has said that to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think a lot of um, right. I think a lot of things sometimes are, are rooted in fear. When we're not when we're not ready to take a first step, we'll make a ton of excuses or we'll procrastinate. But I think that's really rooted in fear. So I think I'm just scared to see like what will happen if I write it. But it's like you just got to start. And I have like my journals. I have journals everywhere, just filled with things. I guess I should just put them together and see what happens. <laughs> not good. Well, I was talking to a. Uh one of the clients and they were talking about like utilizing possibly some like, like a ghostwriter of some sort to help them get their story out because they don't feel you know their time is valuable so i was i was even thinking about that too it's like you know yeah you're busy so i was like yeah might as well do a recording on sunday and just knock it out per week and see what happens you know what I'm okay don't well send me the info let me know i'll check it out but i do think it's like especially for anyone watching or listening i do think it's really important to just write in a journal daily, like mm -hmm. regardless of like how you feel or if you're inspired or not, I would highly recommend just waking up. Oh, look, see, waking up and just writing three pages a day, just fill those three pages. And it could literally just be nonsense that you're saying, but sometimes within that nonsense, you'll find brilliance, you know? Yes, so true. So let's dive into next. Um, I mean, look, you're, grandfather is so just like historian. like we have to talk about like your family lineage to and dkx and for oh, folks okay. in the world that don't know yeah you gotta let yeah let's dive into this your family lineage and dkx and this is i can't wait let's let's talk here we go <laughs> okay so i i asked which grandfather because both of my grandfathers have made like very um big waves within our community so like my maternal grandfather he was an architect one of the first black architects in the country um and many of the buildings that you see in rochester that were built before like 65 were done by him like the monroe county hospital most of the houses in brighton um a few libraries so 
that is something that I'm extremely proud of that I, of you know, an ancestor that looks over me and where I come from. Um, my paternal grandfather, he started WDKX radio, um, which is still on to this very day. You can check it out at WDKX.com. Our call letters stand for Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm oh. X. Ooh. My grandfather, I know, right? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> my grandfather, he started the station in 68, which many people don't know. We didn't go on air until 74. Mm. Now, what happened in that time period was my grandfather was able to solidify frequency, which was unheard of, of like getting your own frequency, especially as a black person. But the problem was we had our frequency. We had a place to put our antenna, but nobody wanted to house a black media company. Nobody wanted us in their buildings. Um, we finally found someone um, I guess it was like 73 that would rent to us. And it was like the way the story is told to me, it's like this old, like crusty building where like the stairs were leaking and like the floors were cracked. The elevators were always broken and we were on the third floor. And, um, but it was the only person that would rent to a black business, which is so sad. So we went on air. Um, April 6, 1974, 5 a.m., and we've been on 24-7 ever since. Um, so my grandfather and my grandmother, you know, really got things moving. We had an amazing support and continue to have amazing support from the community. Um, but the whole purpose of our business is to really give a voice to the unheard. When my grandfather started the process of opening this radio station, you have to remember that time period. That was uh, towards the end of the riots. So you had extreme civil uh, unrest between blacks and whites within Rochester. Um, and nobody covered the stories properly, similar to how things are today, where it's like tr things try to get slipped under the rug or they try to paint people of color in a negative light. Um, and so my family saw that as, you know, what can we do? change the narrative and I think that is the most important thing for our people is when you tell the narrative you control the story if you allow other people to tell your story then you will always be the villain in that story mm -hmm. so we created this radio station to give ourselves a voice um, that's why a lot of our stories focus on black and uh, people of color um, and shedding light on things that that mainstream media doesn't necessarily talk about um, so 1974, we went on air. Uh, we've had the likes of, ah, gosh, like the list goes on. This is why I think it's so important. Like, I really want to write a script about this business because it's, it's fascinating. Like we've had people like Muhammad Ali come in. We had Jesse Jackson come in. My grandmother had to interview him. Like the whole secret service and the FBI was there. It was crazy. Um, and then, and obviously like, those are the stories that I hear. Right. Um, we've had. We've helped kickstart a lot of careers. Mary J. Blige, we were one of the first radio stations she ever came to. Will Smith, same. LL Cool J, same. Queen Latifah, same thing. Mario, same thing. Um, those are, I don't know, those were such random artists, but those are the only ones I thought of. Did one. Beyonce come too? But um, you said what? Then Beyonce come to Rochester as well. Beyonce, too? yep, Beyonce. I remember, oh my gosh, I remember when Jay Z came to Rochester. <laughs> he scared the crap out of me. I don't know what it was. <laughs> he just you know, be was quiet. Like, he's quiet. He's, he's so quiet and he like didn't even smile. You know, like when you meet a little kid, like usually people smile. He just looked back <laughs> at me and I looked back at him and I was like, <laughs> Okay. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have everybody. We, uh, Janet Jackson, Usher. Um, I'm Rick Ross, Trey Songs. I'm trying to Trina. I'm trying to remember like people that I've just interviewed myself. But yeah, it's been like nonstop fun. And so that's that's the business that one of the businesses that I grew up in and around. And many people listen to radio, and they think it's all about like just the music. But when we say WDKX is much more than a radio station, it truly is because. Not only do we focus on news items and community items, we're out in the community. We've given away cars, we've given away scholarships, um, but we also have the advertising and that's what a radio station is too, is, the, is an, a vehicle for advertising businesses. And we like to 
try our best to showcase and 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 reach out to small owned or family owned uh, right. businesses and so more people can you know we can get more business to those people as well we have a website that we are selling t-shirts on more merchandise is coming we have a self-service advertising platform that uh i created mm -hmm. and that my dad helped kind of like bring my vision to life um so yeah things are moving and grooving <laughs> That's awesome. You created, you, you came up with an idea that is on the platform right now. So like you can go in and like create your own ad or something, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. So what you can do. So I took the idea of just like, um, like microtransactions, like, you know, how you, you, you pay for like Netflix or you might buy a show like that's only two ninety nine for the whole season. And so that's kind of the, essentially the concept behind my platform, um, is to, it's like, pick what type of as you want but it's like individually instead of like a lump sum unless you'd like that um See. and you can kind of like tailor make your own uh advertising flight whether it be on like throughout the whole website on the back page if you have like a carousel ad if you have a sponsorship of a podcast if you have a video ad if you there's all types of things and you can kind of put together what you want um what you think is best for your business and yeah, so that was, it's been a fun project. I completely redid the whole website. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, especially like working with my dad. He and I butt heads sometimes because we're so much alike, but it's honestly mm -hmm. such a blessing. You know, he's a bevy of knowledge and he, mm -hmm. he allows me to express myself freely and allows me to create and um, which I think is important. Like he hears me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun. That's what's up, man. And if a family business, like impacting the entire city, <laughs> you know, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Like how does, yeah. How does it feel to be, I guess I kind of asked this, but like to be in a family like that environment like that and then growing up and being a part of that. Yeah. So I guess, you know what, it's like, you don't realize that it's anything until you leave home. I didn't realize that what I grew up in was unique to me because it's all I knew. Um, mm -hmm. I grew up in a very supportive, very creative, very open-minded household, very ambitious household. Um, my parents let me see light and dark when it comes to love, when it comes to business, when it comes to, you know, just everything. So, um, I think that, and especially because everyone around me is much older, it allowed me to, not to grow up faster, but it allowed me to really um, grow, I don't know, I want to say grow wiser, I don't know. I just feel like everyone just kept real with me my whole life. <laughs> and so I really appreciate that when I got into the real world, because I appreciate it in the sense that I kind of knew it was coming, but at the same time, I didn't realize how different everything was from the way I grew up. I didn't realize that not everybody has that type of relationship with their parents or with their grandparents, or not everybody is exposed to having to do books for a business at 14, 15 years old, you know? Um, so they, I feel like they prepared me for life, but I also wasn't expecting how different everything else was. And that's something that I've had to really have a lot of self-awareness and reflection about is being understanding and patient to those around me that don't have the same experiences as me. Mm. Powerful words. Powerful oh. words. <laughs> now we'll kind of go left, uh, left field here. What's your okay. favorite restaurant in Rochester? <sighs> okay, hold on. Let's <laughs> think about that. What's my favorite restaurant in Rochester? Dang, I guess like it depends like what what I'm in the mood for, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if I want like, if I want like Puerto Rican, like I want to go to Sabrino's. If I want Jamaican, I'll go to, dang, People's Choice, or dang, what's the one on East Main? Pepper Pot. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pepper yeah. Pot, that they're really good. Um, I like, um, who else do I like? I like, um. I like Nino's Pizzeria. Mm -hmm. You been? One time, a minute ago. But oh, it's like this little old Sicilian man. He's the sweetest. <laughs> but like, it tastes like their their ingredients come straight out of a garden. It's so yummy. 
Mm, I'm trying to think, like, who else? I like to eat in general, so wherever you take me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll enjoy myself. There's a lot of good places to go in Rochester, too. Yeah, I like it all. Okay. You I'm can't surprised. Go wrong with habits, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you said you said habits? Yeah, I'll eat ice cream for dinner. <laughs> you know, I love going to Belgrade's um, by Sea Breeze. Just oh, yeah. But you know what I miss, and I don't know if you remember this, but it used to be Don and Bob's. Do you remember Don and Bob? Bob's, nah. Wait, Don wait Bob's. Is it by huh? Is it by Seabreeze? It was. It was called Down and Bob's by Seabreeze, and then they had another one on Monroe Avenue. But it was kind of similar to like Shaler's like type style. Yeah, I think they I know. Put the dog in half, and they put the meat sauce and the mustard and everything on it. Mm -hmm. it used to be so good. They so good. On. I you loved know, it there. Most folks said, uh, most people say like, "Oh, you going to Rochester? You gotta try the garbage plate." Yeah, the garbage plate, like garbage okay. plate. <laughs> well, I mean, if you? anything, I I always tell people like, don't leave Rochester without trying Country Sweet or Boss Sauce. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but garbage plates are a lot for for people. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. not everybody can really stomach that, and you have to be in the right type of environment to have a garbage plate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it tastes it tastes good. It tastes good, but it's just so bad for you. Like it's so bad. Yeah, like, that's it tastes good. <laughs> so good. But what about you know? I, I got I gotta say this. What about GNG? I know we're, you know we're I think thinking about bringing it back um, in the next couple of months. What about GNG? When you tried GNG steak out when you were younger? <laughs> See, I'm a. Have you ever been to Campy's? Cam Campy's? Yeah. I haven't been to Campy's. Oh, what is it? I don't know what has the best steak subs in Rochester. Mm. Yo, you're bugging. Go to camp. You need to go today. All right, all right. Let me go there. I think it's on Scottsville. Campies. It's like near Genesee. Okay. You know where DNL Groceries is? If you yeah. like go up the other way, like away from Genesee Valley Park and go up that street, it's right there. Okay, I'll, I'll go up there to test it, but I still, okay, the reason why, we did a pop-up. We uh -huh. had like 300 people show up. Uh-huh. People waiting for three hours for a darn Mandela burger. Are the you past, serious? Every, every Saturday we've done it the past three weeks. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, like, we got to bring it back. If, if you're getting that cup type of review, like, we got to bring it back with a food truck or something. That's what people want. You got to do it. You you got to. This is it's a need. But I'll try camping. I'll, I'll see. I'll I will like break it up, bring it here to the fam, and it's like, all right, all right, I'll test this out. Oh, it tastes better. It's better. Nah, that's what's up. the cheese to get mixed in with meat and the peppers and onions, so. Okay. <laughs> 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 so, all right, you said a really great quote from the wall. I don't know if you want to, I mean, that's what I normally say on the show, like, give a quote for them to, like, take home with them. But, I mean, do you want to just leave off with that one, or you have something else that you live by? Um, Oh, really <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I think recently it would have been, I guess, a quote that I've been gravitating towards is praying without ceasing. That's been okay. something that's, but I will read my quote again because that wasn't really a quote. That was just bubble verse. Okay, ready? Live the life you've always dreamed of. Be fearless in the face of adversity. Never stop learning. Use your imagination whenever possible. Recognize the beauty that surrounds you. Remember where you came from, but never lose sight of where you're going. Mm. Powerful, powerful. Whoever's listening from around the world, y'all better like take some notes. Literally taking notes <laughs> right now, because now that's that's a powerful quote. I might have to. Uh, did you did you find that one online, or you printed that one out? I can't really see it. Like, well, I got this attire. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, darling? I was like custom, like, whoo, you know, but I miss this. It sounds like it, right? No, it do. Oh God, it do. That's what's up, though. Um, so before we close it out, mm -hmm. what's something that you know you want to leave some folks with that can get involved in? I mean, you, you you're in different careers, so like acting, and then also like just the radio, yeah, the field of radio. Like, how do you? To make that impact like you've made. I want to be I like you. Do. 
They want to be like me? Baby, don't be like me. Be like you. But will you inspire me? I, <laughs> <laughs> I inspire you to be you. That's it. I don't think anyone should ever compare. I don't think anyone should ever, you know, it's cool to be inspired by someone, but don't ever try to be like anyone because God made you uniquely you. And you're doing yourself an injustice to God and to yourself and to your ancestors by not really relishing and giving in those gifts that God has given you uniquely to you. So I would say if that's the only thing I can give you today is find what makes you you and then just keep moving in that direction. Mm, that's powerful. In other words, you're saying, don't be coming in my field because I'm, I'm so messing around. Nah, come on over, baby. There's space. Let's create. Let's make it happen. <laughs> nah, that's what's up, man. Y'all make sure y'all take note on that. Like, she's dropping dimes in this podcast. Like, go out there and, like, yeah, that's one thing with social media can really do sometimes is, like, it does it to everybody. Like, that's why I delete it every day and I'll only go on when I got to post something. And it sounds yeah. so bad. I do though, cause like you can scroll through and you're like, dang, my homeboy is doing the same, thing. <laughs> you know, oh yeah. dang, hit him. Ah, oh, gosh. And then the distraction with other stuff, you know. But what well, what's yeah. this thing with, uh, what's this thing with OnlyFans, man? Like, what's this thing with that? Okay, here's what, my thing with OnlyFans. What is this? What is this? Talk, I, encourage, oh. I encourage people to make OnlyFans. Because <laughs> you don't need to be on there doing nothing nasty. You could literally be reading the Bible and people can subscribe to that, okay? You can do whatever you need to do. If you wanna if you wanna twerk something, if you wanna do something else, if you wanna just read a book to people, you can do all of that. If you if that's the way that you can generate some coin, go ahead and do it, baby. But you know, I think that if that's what if that's the direction you wanna take, then go for it. As long as you're not hurting anyone or hurting yourself, nah, why not? You know what? That's a whole different perspective. <laughs> I just I haven't been on there. I just didn't know what it was about. I just heard mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I made an OnlyFans fan mm -hmm. account. So oh, I haven't been on there, but you asked about it. I asked about it because I'm I'm curious. I'm like, I guess it's just is it just nasty stuff like or sex work? No, it's not just for sex work. It's for originally was all types of things. It was originally supposed to be for someone to create a channel that people could subscribe to and uh -huh. like. <laughs> it would be paid. It was like if it was like Instagram Live, but you had to pay to see it. I got you. Somebody, somebody just had to make it seem. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do use it for like you know, for different types of things. But I say, if you're being safe, it, then go ahead. <laughs> you <gotta> do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't glamorize it. You don't have to ever glamorize or idolize something. Just take no. it for what it is, you know? Exactly. Well, first of all, thank you for being on the show today. This was like, this is really impacting. It was good to have you on here. I know we, uh, that's how we saw each other. I was in LA. It's been a minute. Um, definitely gonna come back out there. And yes. um, we, I know this sounds hella random. I wanna go skydiving in LA. You wanna oh, go skydiving? Sure. All right, cool. Right. I, I actually have a gift, a coupon to go skydiving. Say less. Because they messed up my video last time. It was so <laughs> oh, they messed up the video. Yeah, they didn't even take my video. Oh, they so forgot they, to Oh, you can come again for free. So I was like, okay, bet. Like, I had, I love jumping out of a plane. Yeah, I love it. It was fun. Thank you. <laughs> I'm down. All it right. wasn't even that bad. Like, you would think jumping 30,000 feet, you know, out of the sky would be scary, but it wasn't. It felt like you were just you know, floating like a little bird. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. You're, yeah, I love, yeah, you like traveling. You're extreme traveler stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not about it. I was supposed to be in Peru, but you know. Peru. Yeah, Peru was supposed to be my my trip. Well, actually, last month. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is anymore. You guys see me? I'm. This is my quarantine look. I look crazy. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram because that's not what I be looking like usually. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now yeah, I was supposed to be in Peru. I wanted to climb like Machu Picchu and like do the whole camping thing and pet a llama, but that didn't happen. It will happen. This is gonna happen. Hopefully they open the borders up and get, get going and everybody staying healthy. Yes, please stay healthy. Please wear your mask. Please wash your hands. What, for real. 
Those who weren't washing them hands before, you better be washing your hands now. Yeah, you point. nasty. Why weren't you washing your hands? Nasty. Thank you for being on today. I appreciate <laughs> it. And we're definitely gonna have you back on at some point because this was this was a really yeah. good so yay. Thank you so thank you so thank you for listening to the Life Journey Podcast with Quentin Gauze. To find out more and to follow the journey, visit Quentin's Instagram at QGauze or our business page at iron underscore visuals. For full recaps of the show, find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Thank you for tuning in.